Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here welcome. Today I'm coming at you with another story time video and I'll be going more in depth about my old tattoo that is now redone. Um, basically a horror story into my first ever tattoo so let's get on with that video. So we're just gonna jump straight on into it. I'm gonna be talking about my first ever tattoo that is on my right thigh. Um, originally it was supposed to be a sort of old-fashioned vintage style ornate mirror um, and then it had my dad's handwriting that says goodnight sweetheart which was just in a fancy font and then it says all my love dad which is in my dad's handwriting I wanted quite a personal tattoo for my first one because at the time I was a big believer in you should only get tattoos that mean something to you but obviously changed my mind since then I did my research Obviously I wanted to be a little bit different. All of my friends have gone to Area 51 for their first tattoos, but I chose to go to a place called Nudge Nudge Ink Ink, which is on, I've got it down here, Bartholomew Street in Newbury. Um, funny enough, it is no longer called this. If you actually want to look up the artist herself, they are now called The Freak Show Tattoo, but it's still located in the same place. I've been looking for a while and I came across when it was Nudge Nudge Ink Ink and the designs look beautiful. Um, I was in correspondence with quite a few tattoo artists from Reading, Newbury, Basingstoke, everywhere. I was talking to, I think the, the owner of the shop, correct me if I'm wrong, her name was Becca. She agreed that she was going to be the one to do my tattoo because she said it was more her style. Um, I went in to have a consultation, talked her through what I wanted. Um, basically the reason, people don't know why I got the mirror and even like none of my family do to be honest. The mirror is basically to symbolize sort of inner beauty and your struggle with inner beauty. Yeah, like not everyone gets a mirror because that's how they feel, but um, I've read in quite a few articles that having a mirror tattoo basically means that you don't always think that you're beautiful but you have the mirror there to symbolize when you do kind of thing so i thought that was quite fitting um and then just to make it a little bit more personal i had my dad's handwriting obviously scripted over the top which she said she was perfectly happy to do she picked out the font with me um she said give her a couple of weeks and she'd draw it up which she did i think two weeks later she emailed me again and said, oh, your design's ready, do you wanna have and come and look? Hello, that. do you want to come and have a look? I went in, I loved it, it was just as I imagined, loads of swirls, loads of leaves. It was, yeah, it was pretty much what I imagined. She quoted me, from what I remember, she quoted me three to three and a half hours for the tattoo, um, due to the size that I wanted and the placement, la la la. And I think from what I remember, she quoted me 250 pounds, I think. Don't quote me on that. It was about, it was only two years ago, but I can't remember since then. So yeah, I gave her a 50 pound deposit. Um, and obviously you pay the rest when you actually get your tattoo. So there we go, it was booked. Um, I had it three, four weeks after my 18th birthday. Um, my mother-in-law, my boyfriend and no I think it was just us and um, went to go get it done mother-in-law went off shopping and obviously my boyfriend stayed with me to be honest it should have rung alarm bells when I walked upstairs into the sort of parlor studio bit where they do the actual tattooing um, there were no carpets um, or fresh paint or like paint at all on the staircase the walls were like really badly painted was flaking in some places it was it was just it needed a bit of TLC interior wise um, I walked into Becca's studio and it was pretty much a 1970s lounge that just had a tattoo bed and a trolley and obviously anyone in their right mind would be screaming at themselves telling them to get out but 
social anxiety i was like yeah yeah yeah, it's fine it's fine like she's the owner of a tattoo parlor no way would she be running some dodgy shop la 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 um so yeah i made myself comfortable she got all of her ink ready we did the placement made sure i was happy with it laid down she asked if i wanted some music or a film i chose lost boys which is a very gory vampire film from the 80s which probably wasn't the best choice in hindsight but yeah we started off i've been told by many people that the first half an hour is always the worst it's when your skin is obviously very fresh hasn't never been touched by a needle before and it hurts but everyone was telling me don't worry after you get past the first 20 30 minutes you'll be fine it'll go numb you'll forget about it no no that did not happen <laughs> um the pain just got worse and uh worse it just it doesn't seem to end the i've got to empathize that becca was getting quite sort of frustrated because i was wriggling a lot like i was trying to keep my leg as still as possible but the rest of me was wriggling and writhing because i was in so much pain bless him I was holding on to my boyfriend's hand and I practically crushed his knuckles because I, given that I've had so many tattoos after that, I have never experienced the pain that I experienced in that shop. It was just like she was cutting down to the bone with a blunt spoon. It was horrible. Anywho, she quoted me three to three and a half hours. After an hour and 20 minutes, we were done. Again, alarm bells should have been ringing but given how much pain I was in, I was just glad to get out of there. Like, I didn't care. She wrapped me up, told me to keep it on for a few hours, la 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 la, wash it, gave me all the aftercare instructions. I literally just went over my head. I just wanted to get out. However, it came to the paying. Obviously, I mentioned that I only gave a 50 pound deposit and she only charged me a hundred pounds which again, should have rung alarm bells because she quoted me like two, 250 and I paid 150. As you can see, stuff just didn't add up. Like it just, it wasn't okay. Anyway, I went to go and get some lunch and fill my belly with some food, go and shop in to try and cheer me up. I'm not joking. I physically could not walk. My leg was in so much pain and was throbbing so much that I basically couldn't put any pressure on my leg at all. I basically had to be supported to walk. My leg was like trembling. I was hot and then I was going cold. I basically went into like full blown shock. So I waited a few days, did all the care instructions, washed it with like lukewarm soapy water, kept it cling filmed overnight, put the pamphlet on it, la la la. I know every tattoo artist tells you different. I've always used the panthem for all of my tattoos and I always cling film them overnight for up to a week because I'm quite a slow healer. Nothing has ever gone wrong with any other of my tattoos, except this one. After the week was up and it had obviously started scabbing and it was starting to properly heal, it just didn't look right. Um, I was starting to notice that the yellow, uh, the white highlight so I did white ink to highlight some of the areas of the tattoo was starting to go yellow. Um, not good. The handwriting from my dad, as well as just the other script was falling out of my skin. Obviously I know this is really, really common in small script tattoos. So I wasn't too fussed, but it was a large majority of my dad's handwriting that was just coming out of my skin couldn't stop it. After about a month of having it, all of the flowers and the swirls started to look more and more wonky. Basically, the more it healed, the more wonky it looked. One side was of the mirror was thicker than the other. There was this dark shadow, which I don't know where it came from. All the white highlight throughout the tattoo had gone yellow. Most of the black shading had either fallen out or had gone patchy. And then where she had done lines, they were such harsh, harsh lines that it just looked so bad. Like I cannot explain how bad it looked. I messaged, um, I think I messaged her or I commented on one of her posts on Instagram because I found it very, very strange that she was a regular and very active um, Instagrammer. 
and she always posted the work she had done that day on Instagram. So I waited and I waited, kind of given her a chance, maybe there was a backlog of work that she had done that she hadn't posted yet. But after like four months, my tattoo never made it onto her Instagram. She took photos, so I don't quite understand why it didn't make it on there. And it started, started making me think like, well, now that it's healed, it looks really bad. Um, maybe she didn't want to post it because she was actually ashamed of it. Who knows? But basically it came to about a year of having it and I was just, it was getting worse and worse. The more it rubbed on my jeans, the more ink would fall out due to obviously skin, dead skin cells coming off. It was just a really bad tattoo. So I won a raffle with my grandparents in one of the charity shops and I won a voucher for Ink Pile, which is a Basingstoke based tattoo parlor. I went and spoke to Bart and he actually looked at the tattoo and said all of the sort of single line work had pierced the epidermis of my skin. So in other words, her single needle for all of the line work in some places had actually gone too deep into my skin and that's why it had bled out under a few layers of skin which is why it looked so weird. The yellow highlight, because you can't call it white, was very yellow by a year. But luckily Bart said that he would try and fix it for me and at least try and make it look like what I wanted. So given that I had an hour and 20 minutes already done on that leg, plus 150 pound, Bart then spent a further five hours and 25 minutes fixing my leg. He had to go over the entire tattoo again and reshade it. He then had to basically shade the entire face of the mirror apart from the text to try and cover up some of the highlight that she had done that had gone yellow. So he had to color in the mirror, which I wasn't happy with, but it was either I shade it in black or gray once it was healed and it be a more darker piece than originally thought or I have yellow lines through my tattoo, which I wasn't down for. He then fixed all of the script, which was perfect and it's healed beautifully. I don't know what went wrong there. And then there was just some pieces like, you'll see in the video, there's a bit that curves into the handle from the face of the mirror. And there was such deep black lines there that had bled underneath the skin that there was no saving it. Just, there was no saving it. So instead he just added a rose. He obviously asked me first if I was happy to have any additions on there just to try and cover it up a little bit. I said yes because I have a rose on my other leg so it corresponded well. So yeah, I've got a rose and an extra leaf on the sort of further outside of my leg on the mirror just purely to cover up some of the mistakes. Now, I am not slating the Freak Show Tattoo or Nudge Nudge Ink Ink, whichever you'd like to call it. I'm not slating them in any way. Um, obviously, I've seen some amazing tattoos come out of that parlour. However, mine was obviously just not one of them. So yeah, definitely do your research, kids, before you go and get tattoos because you can end up like me and having to spend a total of £550 and near on six and a half, seven hours worth of tattooing just to fix one dodgy tattoo. So keep that in mind. <laughs> Thanks again for watching guys. If you'd like to see more of me, obviously hit that subscribe button down below. And if you want any more funny or dramatic story times from me, obviously leave me a comment or like down below. And I'd like to thank you again for getting me to 200 subscribers yesterday. So see you later.